feel like, you know, a lot of people think, um, you know, I need someone to, to check me and see how far along I am or, um, you know, I need someone to tell me when to push, right? Mm -hmm. But I know, can you touch base on that? Because I found that really fascinating too when you, you yeah. were talking about where pushing came from or coached pushing, I guess. Yeah, so coach coach pushing comes from having an epidural and having your genitals numb. And um and it's really interesting actually though cuz there are many uh clinical stories to say that um like people with like um heart issues or quadriplegics um or paraplegics I wouldn't say um they can't be coached to push. Um, like if you have certain heart issues or like valve or, um, blood vessel issues, uh, the staff is not allowed to coach you to push and the body will still just deliver that baby. Um, happens all the time. However, um, they, it seems like the medical industry felt the need to implement coach pushing because of epidurals. You're, your lower half is numb. And the trouble with doing that is they're not educated on, you know, when the appropriate time is to tell the woman when to push. So these second and third degree tears that you're getting, and I've just seen one of our medical medium community members, like first time baby hospital, she absolutely has second degree tear. And I'm like, you were in the hospital and I know she said she was going to the hospital and I, I had reached out cause I wanted to be like, don't let them tell you when to push. And then like, you know, tell them about the organic role of the father. Cause it rips you, you know, rather than listening to yourself. So there's even in, even in the holistic alternative world though, there's this whole thing called the ring of fire and most uh, holistic practitioners will tell you, yeah, you're going to feel the ring of fire. Just push through it. Don't worry about it. And we learned in the Matrona that that is wrong. That is your body. And it makes so much sense telling you you're going to rip. That is your perineum stretching out, going white, mm -hmm. no blood. It has not yeah. been lifted up by your contraction. Your contraction will actually pull the perineum up so that when you push, it doesn't catch on the baby's head. And it's funny because when you look at women having contractions, you'll see that the woman doesn't actually even respond at first. You'll, you can visually, as the partner or the caregiver, see the contraction happen because it's going to pull up on the belly. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see that pulling up and then you're going to see the woman respond to the contraction. So it happens in two separate parts and don't push on the ring of fire, <laughs> double dilation. There's dilation of the yoni and there's dilation of the cervix and the yoni has to be open and dilated enough to allow for that baby's head to come out. And I think a lot of us are really scared for the baby to be down there for a long time in between the pelvis. Um, I mean, I definitely was, I tore, um, but I had birth trauma, you know, or I didn't have birth trauma, but I was imprinted. I had trauma that had imprinted my soul and my body. And I thought to myself, I have to get this baby out quick. This baby can't stay in between my pelvis. Cause I, I had broken my pelvis. I was thrown from a horse two years prior and I had broken my pelvis in four places. So I was like, I have to hurry up and do this. And even though I knew I had watched a really great midwife give a talk on YouTube and she told everyone in her audience, like, don't do that blue in the face, purple pushing. And I sure, I still did it. I still did it because I was scared, you know, and I tore so bad. I blew out this varicose knee that's in my right, um, this varicose oh. vein in my knee. Um, and I, and I had trouble walking for the first few days. I, my knee probably hurt worse than my perineum. But, you know, and it healed naturally. I didn't go get stitches or anything. Um, but it's, and honestly, the, the other thing, and I hate to say it, my midwife 
told me when to push. And that was like, you know, and I still haven't had that conversation with her today. And it's something I'd like to, because she's a Matrona midwife. She's had the same exact teacher as me. And I don't know how, you know, passionate Wapio was probably almost 15 years ago now about double dilation and stop telling women, women to push. Right. Um, but she did, she kind of took me away from that altered state of consciousness out of being in my own body because I was a first time mom. I would have had no idea, you know, mm -hmm. I would have just did my own thing. Yeah. And now when I have my second baby, I'm going to have all these guessing games going on. <laughs> There's going to be this whole dialogue in my brain. Like, do I push? Do I not push? You know, like it's probably going to be a little harder for me to step back because now um, I, I have yeah. an education on top of it. Yeah. So when should she push? When you feel it, when right? When you feel the it's, urge. Yeah. I know it was, I, I had like a little urge to push when it was time, but it wasn't like that strong urge to push. Um, you should be able I, to put your, your hand down there and you should be able to feel their head. Okay. The head should be on the perineum, perineum and visible. So that's the rule in the UK. Like the... In UK, they don't tell any woman to push until they can see the baby's head. And that makes more sense. In the US, that's Probably. not how it is. Yeah. They'll tell you to push way long before. Yeah. But it should be open, there should be a head emerging. You know, that contraction is pushing down and that head is crowning. Yeah. Wow. Mm. That's really interesting because, yeah, it was not, that was not the case with the hospital. Yeah, I I definitely felt the ring of fire, and um, I ripped a little bit, so um, I, it was probably like almost time, but not quite, but I, you know, and he came out in like 10 minutes, but still, yeah, it was, um, I felt the ring of fire. 